The Swedish public prosecutor has requested the extradition of Mr. Assange on charges of serious sexual offences. That request has raised a point of law of general public importance. It is not a point in respect to which the particular facts of Mr. Assange's case have any relevance. This summary is about that point of law. It used to be the case that this country would not extradite a person to another European country until a court here had considered the evidence against that person. The court would not approve extradition unless the evidence justified his being subjected to a criminal trial. All that changed in 2001 when we gave effect to the 1957 European Convention on Extradition. The following year, the provisions of that convention were superseded by an agreement reached between the members of the European Union. The terms of that agreement were set out in a European Union framework decision, which this country was under a duty to implement. The framework decision directed that if a judicial authority in one state requested the extradition of a person from another state, that the latter state would give effect to the request without considering the evidence. It was for the requesting state to consider whether the evidence justified extradition. The United Kingdom gave effect to the framework decision in the Extradition Act 2003. That act provided that subject to certain conditions, this country will extradite a person if we receive a request from a judicial authority in another member state. The point of law is simply, what do the words judicial authority mean? Mr. Assange has argued that they mean a court or judge. Sweden's request has been issued by a public prosecutor who is not a court or judge, so Mr. Assange has argued that the request is invalid and he doesn't have to go back to Sweden. The point of law is simple to state, but it has not been simple to resolve. Indeed, we have only reached our decision by a majority of five to two. There was discussion in Parliament about the words judicial authority when the bill which became the Extradition Act was being debated. The bill used the words judicial authority because those words were in the framework decision, and the Act was designed to give effect to the framework decision. It is clear that some members of Parliament believe that the words judicial authority in the framework decision meant a court or a judge. Indeed, one minister specifically stated to a parliamentary committee that this was the case. But he was mistaken. Judicial authority is the English translation of the French words autorité judiciaire. The framework decision is in both English and French, so it's necessary to have regard also to what the French phrase means. The French phrase has a wider meaning than the English phrase. In French, the words judicial authority can be used of a public prosecutor. When the Member States implemented the framework decision, many of them appointed public prosecutors to perform the role of the judicial authority. There was no suggestion that this was contrary to the framework decision. Having particular regard to this fact, the majority of the court agreed that in the framework decision, the words judicial authority or autorité judiciaire bear a meaning that includes a public prosecutor. Two members of the court, Lady Hale and Lord Mance, consider that this does not determine the meaning of judicial authority in the Extradition Act. In that act, they mean a court or judge, as the minister had explained them. The other members of the court do not agree. Parliament's intention in passing the Extradition Act was to give effect to the framework decision. This was necessary in order to produce a uniform and coherent system of extradition in Europe. It was also necessary in order to comply with the duty of the United Kingdom under international law. So there is a presumption that the words judicial authority should have the same meaning in the Extradition Act that they have in the framework decision. The understanding of some members of Parliament or the statement of the Minister as to the meaning of the framework decision does not displace this presumption. For these reasons, the majority has concluded that the Swedish public prosecutor was a judicial authority within the meaning of both the Framework Decision and the Extradition Act. It follows that the request for Mr. Assange's extradition has been lawfully made and his appeal against extradition is accordingly dismissed.